First of all, I'd like to thank the North Carolina Foundation for Public School Children for this most singular honor. I am deeply, deeply moved, and thank you very much for all of the work that you do. I wish, having said that, I could just now sit down. <laughs> and maybe some of you, after I speak, would wish likewise. <laughs> But I know of one person in this room, other than my wife, that will like what I'm going to say, and she's sitting right here, uh, June Axis, and let me give her a visit. So let me tell you about what great education is. Jewish people are just finishing the festival of Passover. And you know, the one thing about Jewish festivals are uh, that they basically all have the same thing. Uh, they tried to kill us, somehow another God saved us, now let's eat. <laughs> so we have a Passover dinner called, last week, called a Seder, okay? It's a Passover dinner, and we eat unleavened bread. And one of the other things that we eat, besides unleavened bread, which is called matzah, of bitter herbs. And the herbs that we had at our Seder, at our Passover dinner, we're, we're actually this year from Trader Joe's, a shout out to them. They should give more money to the uh, North Carolina Foundation for Long School Children. Maybe I'll, I'll uh, make a, a, a request of that. But, but we actually have white horseradish, right horseradish. And white horseradish is so bitter that when my <laughs> wife ate it, she started tearing up. Okay, if you eat white horseradish, uh, you don't need to see an allergist. Okay. Now, when I was growing up, my mother used to tell me, you have to eat the bitter herbs. Because if you don't eat the bitter herbs, you will not understand what slavery is. You will not understand the bitterness of slavery in Egypt. You will not understand the bitterness of slavery throughout history. You will not understand, you will not have, as Marcus said, that was a great quote, by the way, you will not have empathy unless you can understand the bitterness. Now, we're not eating bitter herbs tonight, but I want to tell you that, in my opinion, there's a lot of bitterness. There's a lot of bitterness when we look at North Carolina's education. We are experiencing bitter, bitterness tonight because of the tactical strikes against public school teachers, the laying off of thousands of teachers. We are experiencing bitterness. We are experiencing bitterness tonight because of the diversion of public funds from public schools to private schools. And we are experiencing bitterness tonight because of the nearly one half a billion dollars slash from the University of North Carolina system. Bitterness. We are experiencing bitterness because enrollment in teacher prep programs in the UNC system has dropped 27% in the last five years. And as I think it was Marka or someone else said, we are facing an imminent crisis of, of a teacher shortage. That, folks, is, again, the bitter herbs of North Carolina. The bitter herbs is that we are now permitting for-profit run charter school. The bitter herbs is that under Governor Hunt, we were in 24th, 25th, or whatever, 26th, and now you know where we are, okay? If you're an optimist, it's 42. If you're a realist, it's 48 or 49. And just think what we can brag about. We're better than Mississippi. <laughs> I'm sorry for anybody that was born in Mississippi. We got to tell the truth sometimes. We experienced bitterness because a woman in my congregation told me last last in last year she received two hundred and thirty dollars to pay for schoolroom supplies. A wonderful teacher in the Gilbert County School System, and she had to spend more than two thousand dollars for out-of-pocket expenses. The average in the state of North Carolina now is fifteen hundred dollars a teacher. That is bitterness for an underpaid teacher. The best professors, 
the best teachers are moving away from North Carolina because Terry Greer, who used to be, remember Terry? He came in and recruited all our best teachers. Okay? I don't blame him. We have hell of a good teachers in Guilford County, don't we? Okay? We just don't pay them up. We have bitterness tonight because a young girl came up to me last year and told me that in her class, in her honors English class, there were 37 kids, and I asked how many sections did that teacher teach? She told me four, and I did a calculation that if that teacher gave a five-page paper, I think four or five times a year, she would have to read something like, he or she would have to read 7,000 pages. 7,000, come on, I used to be a history teacher, I know that. And so guess what? There's no papers, only multiple choice tests. No papers, no papers. We are finally receiving bitterness because of the underfunded budgets. The fact, folks, is, is that by 2014 and 2015, North Carolina was still spending $100 million less on public education. You should say it on him. I was asking some but that's okay. <laughs> than it had before the economic recession. Last year, and this is the sex. This, this I, it just broke my heart. Last year in Gilbert County, we wanted to pass, and I'm not a big sales tax proponent because I think it's regressive. But we wanted to pass a one quarter of 1% sales tax to benefit the schools. Now, unless my math is wrong, that's 25 cents for every $100 one spends. Right? 25 cents. And our county voted it down. 25 cents for every hundred dollars. And I began to think, well, what is it? What is it that's going on here that we can't afford 25 cents out of a hundred dollars? And I came up, and I'm going to show it to you tonight, with a visual, which by the way, Martha, if you want to auction this off at a hundred dollars, you can use this visual if you want. But I came up with a visual which is illustrative of the sickness that we have here in the state of North Carolina. Can you tell me what word that is? Me. Okay? So the question is, how do we change? How do we change <laughs> The me, the idea of me, which doesn't care about anybody else's education other than my, my own ch children, doesn't care about the impoverished, doesn't care about the kid that needs help. How do we change the me philosophy, the me spiritual sickness to something better? Good job. This is a hundred dollars. I'm almost done. I'm almost done. You know what that is, folks? That is the difference between what is and what ought to be. What is the ought to be? The ought to be is that there should be great teachers in our state who are well paid, adequate teacher training programs, smaller class sizes, and no for profit charter schools. We here in the state of North Carolina ought to have, and we deserve to have, a public educational system wherein every single child is able to fulfill their God-given potential. We ought to have, and we deserve to have, a public educational system wherein each child in North Carolina is able to become all that God needs for them to be. And we ought to have, and we deserve to have, in North Carolina, a public education system where in the current bitterness is transformed into the sweetness, the sweetness of learning and meaning. Once again, from the bottom of my heart, folks, thank you. Thank you to the North Carolina Foundation for Public Schools for the Children. Thank you for everyone in this room that teaches, that works for the betterment of our kids. 
May God bless us all with the fortitude and vision to fulfill the dream of a quality education for all of the children of the great state of